The following may contain offensive language, adult humor, and or content that some viewers may find offensive. The views and opinions expressed by any one speaker does not explicitly or necessarily reflect or represent those of Mark Rattledge or W2M Network. Please listen with caution, or don't listen at all. TV party tonight! Oh, TV party tonight! Oh, we got nothing better to do than watch TV and have a couple of brews. Don't want to talk about anything else. We don't want to know. We're dedicated yes. to our favorite shows. Oh, my tickets! Everybody loves him, Poto! Gary Dog! Dancing at Blind Ball! Futurama! Good evening! You are listening to a Rad Religion Broadcasting premiere podcast TV party tonight. I'm your host, the Bandana Reporter, and frankly, I'm stuffy, Mr. <laughs> Mark Radledge. And tonight, our favorite show is Doom Patrol Season 4. Doom Patrol is an American superhero television series developed by Jeremy Carver, based on the DC comic superhero team of the same name, and specifically Grant Morrison's run on the title. It features Jane played by Diane Guerrero, Rita Farr, played, played by April Bowlby, Big Stone by Jovine Wade, Larry Trainer, Matt Borner, and Matthew Zuck, and Cliff Steele by Oscar-nominated Brendan Fraser, uh, and then Niles Calder by Timothy Dalton, as the members of the eponymous Doom Patrol. Um... This was brought to you by the good people at Berlanti Productions, Jeremy Carver Productions, DC Entertainment, and Warner Brothers Television. And joining me tonight, of course, is my Shapoopy. <laughs> He's my Shapoopy, Shapoopy, Shapoopy. The Jesse Starker's next. Shapoopy, Shapoopy. Oh, like, I just tune in because I don't know what they're talking about. Why is he singing Shapoopy? Why is he singing Shapoopy? <laughs> and let me tell you why I'm singing Shapoopy, Jesse. Tell me all about it. Because the butts were singing Shifufi. Oh, the wear butts, the zombie butts. So I couldn't get enough of them. Just couldn't I, get enough of them. Really? I don't generally. You know how you know how I've been lately. Can we not be lizard brain? Can we not do a spinoff and a uh, an interconnected universe? Can we not? Can we not just leave something? I was I had lunch with Dorian today, and we were talking about Matt Reeves as Batman, and I was just like I cried at the end. I cried like. You know, when the world, you know, it made me feel young again, like when the world was new. I just, I, <laughs> I cried. I loved the Batman. Mm-hmm. It was the Batman movie I'd been waiting for for my nigh on 46 years of life. Right, right. And he was just like, what do you think about the sequel? I'm like, leave it the fuck alone. Stop messing with this. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it be. Leave it's it like be. Chef, it's like a chef goes, hey, I want to make you a nice meal. What do you like? And you tell him the things that you like. And he brings you a, and he brings you a dish. And it's perfect. And he's like, okay, let me leave now. You've right. made this perfect dish. I don't want, don't touch it. He's like, okay, but I have soup. No, I don't need the soup. You made everything I could have ever wanted. Right, but have you had my cake? I don't want cake. I <laughs> just want the meal you made. Leave it alone. <clears throat> However, all that to say, Jesse, my shapoopy, mm. I need a spinoff of the Whereabouts. Oh, boy. But they're only doing musicals. There was just so much in this season mm-hmm. that left me wanting more. And really? I, well, the wear butts for sure. Okay, I mean, but only the wear butts. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, there was a couple other things that I feel like really wasn't. I, I shouldn't say completely explored. It mm-hmm. was more along the lines of like just you want a uh, Danny was, the Street series, don't you? Danny the Street. I want to see the further adventures of Larry Trainer. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, and 104. I mean, my goodness, there's some stuff out there that they could do. Um, and look at you in for the gay romance, Jesse. Hey, Love it. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Okay. Um, yeah, it was, you know, there was a lot that was put in place. Plus, I think there was a lot that just was thrown at you with no answer and sometimes no resolution. Uh, <laughs> when I say resolution, I mean, closure is probably the best thing to say. There is Although, only one character who I was interested in besides the werebutts okay. that I was interested in, like the further adventures of. It was Madame Rouge. 
Madame Rouge yeah. and her taking on the ant farm. What so. if Madame Rouge puts on a black jumpsuit with a skull on it? Well, and she's just taken out. Like, go to town. Go to town. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Let can we get the gender swapped comic swapped Punisher? Oh, oh, it'd be great. It would be great. Uh, final season too, man. Uh, they had to end it, and yeah. I understand. Um, where understand. else were they going to go with this? Right. This, right. Let me tell you. By the time we get to season four of Doom Patrol, I mean you and I, just going back to season one, <laughs> way back when I was in the hospital with um with cancer. Dang uh, God. I'll never forget that. Just because, like, that's the show that got me through that week. Mm. And we were that was at that at the time. That was 2020. Um, we were reviewing everything. Anything that was comic related, we reviewed it. I mean, it was if not me and you, that it was me and somebody else. So I had no interest in the Doom Patrol show. It was just one of the ones that was on DC Universe at the time. Yeah. One of the ones that we did. And it was like our favorite show of the year. We sung the praises of Doom Patrol. But it didn't... It was different than any other show on at that time it definitely felt like the the producers and writers were kind of just given a blank canvas and a check yeah what? about the only thing that i could compare it to when it comes to that is legion you remember legion and how crazy and out there that was That's so funny you say that because i was because by the end of this i was getting very much legion vibes oh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> oh jesse those are the days <laughs> <laughs> let's put oh. hey let's take the guy from west virginia and the weirdo from new york and make him watch an esoteric show and see what they say <laughs> that's a great show too <sighs> great show yeah. doom patrol definitely got very legiony by the end mm -hmm. But um, that first season wasn't quite as esoteric as it got to be by the time we get to seasons. Less so season two, more so season three. And then by season four, it just felt, this is what I was getting to. It just felt like the writers put a bunch of ideas in a hat. Yeah. And then dumped them on the table and was like, continue the whereabouts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> continue the whereabouts. Okay. <laughs> what about. Uh, <coughs> How about crazy, despotic, um, fame-driven god like uh, Isabel Feathers? You know, I well want to be <laughs> in the room when they're going. Hey, remember the werebots from season three? Yeah. What about if they sang Chipoopy? <laughs> it's so it's so crazy. <laughs> you can't describe this show to anybody that's not watched it and expect them to go, "Oh yeah, that sounds interesting." Because when it's you so completely off the wall. When you tell a person at work what you're watching, because I've had, a, you know, because people have been, I'm talking to people, they're like, what are you doing? I'm watching a show called Doom Patrol. What's that? Don't worry about it. I can't. <laughs> I'm not even going to begin to tell you what the show is about. I don't know what the show is yeah, about. Yeah, you I know the it. people that would actually like it. Yeah. Because if you're like, okay, you would like it, watch it. But you know that the majority of the people are going to be staying away. You from seem like, like the that. type that does ecstasy and LSD. You <laughs> like this show. <laughs> Sit down. Have you, you know, have you a nice little trip. Enjoy the season. Um, I want to get it. Really, the only like thematic thing. There were two things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> three things that were on my agenda for tonight before I tag, tag you in. The overall theme of this season was aging. Um, something that, you know, I'm going to be 50 years old in about two years. Um, I'll be 48 this year. And I've a uh, two-time cancer survivor, and I've been overweight for most of my life, and my lungs are kind of shot now. Um, I am reminded daily that I'm getting older. Um, and I'm, I'm owning it. I'm, doing, I'm living my best life to the best of my ability, but... There are some days where I can't, I can be, I remember you saying on our previous podcast, like, I think we were talking about, I can't remember like what the total subject matter was, but you were like, I'm, we were talking about age play. That's what it was. And you're like, I'm kind of, we were, we, it was the Metal Hammer of Doom extra where you did BDSM test. Oh, okay. All right. Like, we were talking about play. age play moment, like briefly. And All it's, right. and I said, you know, age play is typically you act like a baby or something. And Jesse's like, well, I'm kind of like an age player because I'm really like young at heart. I'm like a two, I'm like a 16 year old guy in a 40 some odd year old man's body. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not what that is, but I like that you're playing along. Um, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> you did. You I, did your best. I passed the test, did I? <laughs> <laughs> you got an A. <laughs> um, but I um and I was thinking about like to be young in spirit, to be young in heart, and to have your body betray you at every turn. 
Yeah. And um, this season, the plot of it is the the villain is stealing the immortality from the longevity, longevity. from the Doom Patrol, so that it you know it can come to the real world and take over the universe as near as I could tell. So what all that means is that each one of these characters is now having to deal with the fact that um, they are getting older. They are going to die sooner than later. And what do they do with the time they have left? You know, do we try to get our longevity back? If we get our longevity back, what do we do with it? And it's funny because I'm also watching, I was watching The Crown at like the same time, the, the last season of The Crown. Have and a hard time keeping them separate in your mind. I know that could probably happen. Yeah, I, well, I remember <laughs> when Robot Man um, addressed the Queen. <laughs> I also remember that time Robot Man met George Bush. It was fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm making a Tony Blair joke. Um, so anyway, uh, but a very similar thing where there's elder characters that are very much like you know Rita says at the end of the show because she loses her longevity. And her age, she starts to rapidly age. And by the end of the show, she dies. And Cliff is very much like, no, we fuck death. Mm. And, it, and it was actually one of the most real moments of the show for me because they live in a universe where they actively defeat death on an ongoing basis. Yeah. So Cliff's like, I don't accept this. Let's just go to hell and go get her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And they're like, okay, why don't we just go to hell and go get her? And I was like, if you lived in a world where that were possible, wouldn't people make that decision? Yeah, right. It, and Rita was like, I've lived a long life. I just want to rest. And I got it. You know, it her death didn't make me sad. It was earned. Um, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She, she had done a lot. She had lived a life. And it does get to a point. You know, I was thinking about our discussion of like not all robots and stuff, where if you have an unnaturally long life, don't you just get tired of it after a while? You know, don't <laughs> you ever like come to the conclusion of I I I have done my bit for God and country. And now it's time for me to lay down. Right. Um, yeah. So I was thinking a lot about that throughout the, throughout the season. Yeah, there's, I got the same vibe, obviously, you know, sitting there watching these superheroes deal with the fact that they're mortal, uh, which, you know, it's not like that was something they hung their hat on this whole season or anything like that. But, that's something that they certainly didn't want to die. And now that they've been around for so long and a entity has come by and stole their uh, longevity so that they are going to now be able to pass away and it's not going to be very fun. Well, right. I mean, who wouldn't want to try and fight uh, to get that longevity back? So as a person, yeah, man, I mean, I, I haven't gone through half the struggles that you have when it comes to your health and, I still, to this day, at 45, sit here and think to myself, man, what, what's going to happen when I, when I go? Uh, is, is my life's purpose going to be complete? Because there's so much more that I want to try and get done before I leave here. Uh, and there's you know, always Rita, more. Right. When you right. stop, that's the thing. I, I, it's not like I, it's not like I disagree with you, like a debatable point, but it's a philosophical thing. And I just want to share with my friend and see how you feel about it. When you stop having purpose, you're already dead. But just because you have more to do doesn't mean your time can't be up. Um, and I, I tend to live that way. You know, I don't know when it's going to be over, but I'm but I'm not worrying about it right now. Right. And I'm going to keep, you know, if if it's my time to go, then it's my time to go. And then it's done. I did everything I was supposed to do up until this point. And sure, I could have done more. Um, I, I, you know, if I got, but if I was blessed with more life, I could do more. But mm -hmm. since you have no control over that, um, you know, I always think like when it's my time, then I, I'll be satisfied with what I've accomplished up to that point. The people that don't try anymore the people that are just like i i don't do i don't try i don't um you know they, that, that phrase that you use i have more to do when they've decided they have nothing more to do then you're already dead right now you're just taking up air yeah i personally feel like i would be 
it'd be tough for me to find peace. I think, and, and at least you know, right now, it would be tough for me to find peace with where my family's at, where, what kind of living situation there is. And then uh, there's the other side of the coin that kind of goes through my head or the, the other s- side of things where it's just like, you know, you're going to be dead. You're not going to care anymore, really. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, really, there's there's not much worry and no reason to worry right now, because once you're dead, that's pretty much it. You, when you can't I, um, do anything after that. When so, 2017, when I went to the pulmonologist and he was like, you probably have cancer. You should go to you should go to a cancer specialist and get this checked out but it looks like you have lymphoma and i didn't know what lymphoma was at the time and he handled it with all the grace and dignity of you know a robot um <laughs> here's the guy you have a little lymphoma you'll be fine the fuck is lymphoma oh it's cancer isn't that deadly why are you treating this like i have a cold Ooh. um so anyway uh i was with jonas at the time so in 2017 he's three and I, I had, I, I couldn't. There was no one for me to give him to, so I took him with me to the pulmonologist. And I didn't know I had cancer, so I didn't know how bad it was going to be. Um, so I go in there, and they've done the um, the CAT scan or whatever it was I had at the time. And he's like, "Yeah, you have. It like, looks like you have some lymphoma. You know, you need to go see a specialist." Okay, what's lymphoma? It's cancer. Oh, you think I have cancer? And I thought I was going to die. Like it's 2017. I'm uh, 40. Yeah, I must have just turned. I was either going to be 40 that year or just turned 40. Um, and I think I'm going to die. And I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old. And I've never been like a big doctor type. You know, I, uh, I get yeah. sick. <laughs> I've known you long enough to actually know that you aren't. <laughs> Yes, you have seen me <laughs> die on a podcast and get mad that you kicked me off. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> we, you were dead. So I'm sorry. I didn't think you were coming back. That's your I, problem. I, I needed to end the call. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you'll fucking wait is. next time. Um, he's, not, he's not coming back. See ya. <laughs> the fuck, I'm not. Um, anyway, I've never been one to like go to the doctor. I've never one to like let being sick or injured keep me down. Like I remember, I I took a. An entire, someone's entire body to my knee and it like knocked it out of place and I couldn't walk on it, but I just like wrapped it up and like went to work the next day. Yeah. Um anyway, this so I say all that to say that this was the first time I really had like felt like I was looking death in the eyes and like I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle it. And I'm looking at my son and he's like, Why are you crying? And I'm like, because I'm on a bench now. I'm outside, I'm outside the pulmonologist's office in Brandon, Florida, and I'm sitting on a bench and I'm just like my whole world just fell apart on me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I I don't know what to do, but I got to get this dealt with and hopefully I'll live through it. And not only did I live through it, but I got it again and and live through it a second time. Yeah. Um, Dying twice and two or three times along the way. So all that to say, um, facing death once really changed my whole opinion on it. Because there was nothing more I could do. There was all I could do was try to get better. And if it's like many other people who get cancer, maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. You know, maybe you get cured of the cancer, but something else kills you like COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so my, my point with all that, relating it back to June Patrol, is I liked how the individual characters in their own way struggled with mortality yeah yeah and nobody you know nobody accepted it and and was at peace with it other than rita everybody else just like you said at the at the end was just like let's go let's go get her bring her back uh to the land of the living we've got our immortality back and we she needs to have that um there was a lot man that whole sequence was powerful yeah because her funeral talk- cracked me her funeral cracked me up by the way <laughs> everybody which I, by the way it it is just it, perfect that she becomes a ghost immediately afterwards and like oh yeah she's still hanging around and we can still talk to her <laughs> uh but let's go have a funeral and she gets to attend her own funeral of all things and it's awful and nobody yes. really knows her 
<laughs> That's um, how I feel. That is like how I feel mine's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> like, Robert and Alexis and you, you're going to like, show up to my funeral and just like, he was really into porn, and like he has like a hustler magazine to go with me to the to the other side. Oh yeah, we put like, it in. This is not what I wanted. <laughs> oh wow! Like, here's a book of dick jokes because that seems to be what he was into. Like uh, perfect. You, no one knows me. Perfect. <laughs> oh man! I told you yeah. I want I I told you I want to be roasted, right? Not like I remember. Fire. I you remember. Know, remember. I want a celebrity yeah. roast when she I'm dead. Got, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these toys uh yeah yeah her funeral was pretty funny she got to sit there and watch her body uh pretty much blow up and then they <laughs> stuck it with a stick and it proceeded to make a large large fart sound the embodiment of grace and dignity under fire having to watch her body blow up like a whoopee cushion oh and, and fart you, out <laughs> <laughs> you think everything's going to be perfect because yeah you got jane sitting there singing ave maria uh you know and it's just perfect setting and then things of course go out of out yeah. of control um, it's great it's doom patrol that's that's um, what it is i don't know if we have anything more on like the aging aspect of the show um i we got to come back to it um because i i don't want to i don't want to get into the conclusion of the show right this very second we're like 20 minutes into the sh into the podcast yeah but you know cliff very much like i had you know he has parkinson's he had parkinson's going into the season mm -hmm. and he knew that his days were numbered and you know he had lived not a great life and all he wanted to do was be there for his grandson and they made it so that he could feel his grandson's body with the, you know with whatever it was they did to his hand so a lot of the seasons is protecting that hand oh yeah with the so the, the first thing he touches is his grandson but i liked you know cliff's story too about I am, there's no way I can make up for all the shitty things that I've done. All I can do is be better going forward. Mm -hmm. And he kind of focuses on being a better granddad to the exclusion of all else. This occasionally has to be turned back around again. But like, that's the whole reason he gives up his longevity to Immortus was like, Immortus was like, if you do this, like, well, you'll have time with your grandson, something like that. It was something having to do with his grandson. Yeah. Yeah. He was wanting to, uh, I mean, essentially be there uh and be home to, with his grandson um and yeah be able to experience uh number one the the feeling <laughs> like you were talking about uh and he also wants to reconnect with his family uh he wants yeah. to try and get back and 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 be a grandpa a grandfather um uh yeah it's it's tough to watch that because that's we're all probably going to experience many of us are going to experience something what like regret that. i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> we're all going to i i'm looking at it from another side of that where we're watching our somebody who is a grandfather go through a, a, a like a mental illness of some sort something that he just can't get his body to do what he wants it to do and he's trying yeah i see you <laughs> i see you trust me uh, he just can't get that thing to uh, get the body to do what he wants it to do. And it's, it's hard to watch because you watch him slowly decline. Um, it's sad. It's yeah. really sad. Um, Diane Guerrero's character, uh, Jane, she, um, looks really good in a half shirt. Um, I'm sorry. What were you going to say? She does. <laughs> no lie. <laughs> Dan Guerrero. I oh know. man, I, I know. I know we're talking the musical number in a few, but my goodness. Yeah, she was pretty hot. Um, she's she's my uh, current desktop background right now. Um, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> what happened to what's her face from oh, the wire? From the wire? <clears throat> from uh, everybody loves Raymond. Uh, no, um, the, the the chick that you and I fawn over. Oh, oh my goodness! Yeah. Uh, now I can't remember her name. Of course, I put yeah. her on the spot, but I know exactly who you're talking about. It's McNulty's ex-wife. Yes, McNulty's ex-wife. Yeah. All right. Um. Anyway, yeah. Di uh, Diane Guerrero's uh, Janet character, Jane character, rather. She, um, I think by the end of it, she merges all the personalities together, and they start calling her Kay, and she can finally live like a normal person. And Dorothy, um, you know, the chief's daughter, br brings to life this character 
who then starts living as a regular human. And of course, they're both gay, they're totally gay for each other. Space case is on the case. Space lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> no interest in that show. That, well, actually, yeah, there you go. <laughs> spin off, spin off number five from Doom No, thank Patrol. you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, I want butt chicken chipupi or nothing. Uh, all right, then. Um, but I, I, I liked her resolution. You know, she, um, I think she had the least like attachment to like the whole aging thing. Like she was experiencing it. And like her character goes starts to begin to have dementia. Dementia, yeah. But then she gets her longevity back, and you know, and it's more of for four seasons she's been struggling with all these different personalities, and she finally, you know, fi she finally figures out how to be whole. Yeah, she puts the puzzle together. It's very, yeah. a very physically represented mm -hmm. <laughs> in in the show where she is trying to get herself straight, and she. Uh, finally is able to get all of those personalities in a line. She doesn't realize it's happening at right. first, but then, yeah, she she gets to that point where uh, at the end, every she wants to go by Kaleidoscope, but K. And she has to also acknowledge the fact of the trauma that she went through as a kid where she was uh, raped by her father. Yeah. And, of course acknowledging it is like one of the big themes of that I, i'm pretty sure it's that whole episode when they're in the time stream or whatever is is her acknowledging what happened and actually the she keeps hearing the voices telling her to say it say it say it and she wasn't going to because she's going to deny well i don't want to say she's going to deny it but i mean she doesn't want to say it because saying it makes it real right makes makes you confront what happened and i'm not a therapist but i'm certain i've, I've heard that on a tv show somewhere um so, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you, you know, she works through it. So, mm -hmm. um, let me talk about the musical episode. Mm, boy. So this is a trend happening. Yes, it is. <laughs> you're, um, do you still do like the TV fanatic or whatever TV app you're using where you like, you can connect with other people who watch the show. I'm curious yeah, if TV, there are any comments on it. TV time. I could go there and check it out. If you want to talk for a few minutes, see what everybody so, says. A musical episode, like I, I rant, I raved about the um, Strange New Worlds musical episode. It definitely, when I was talking about it with David, it definitely felt like they wanted a musical episode, so they wrote a reason to have one. But what was great about it was that it, they actually worked through some of the plot elements in the songs, which I really liked, and I thought it, they did a good job with it. Right. I don't know if I can say that about this episode. The songs <laughs> themselves were okay. They were fine. They were entertaining. And the idea that Immortus, um, one of the things about Immortus is that she wants all of this attention. Um, you know, and so she re she constructs this world that they're living in where they celebrate her. And it's Immortimus. Yes. Immortimus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, and I understand, I got that as a concept, you know, and this was supposed to be almost like utopian where look, you know, everyone has what they want. Everyone, you know, it's like, it's like the nexus from Star Trek generations. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Here is the universe where you have all the things that make you happy. And of course, nothing ever makes anyone happy. That's the lesson I've learned from television. Cliff is actually Cliff. Uh, you know, he's yeah. not robot man anymore. Yeah. Larry is Larry. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's with the other guy. Um, everyone has what they need. And I, I don't know. I just, it didn't feel, it, it felt forced, I guess is my opinion. Well, I'll agree with you there, but I think that that was on purpose. I think it's one of those things where the creators were probably like, let's poke fun at the musical trend that's going on in the TV right now. Oh, you think it was that meta? Yes. Oh, okay. I absolutely do. Okay. I think that I'm going to let were... you, I'm going to let you convince me of that. <laughs> I think that they were. I mean, the musical episode, uh, what do we got? Like, there was probably uh, 50 minutes, maybe 40, 50 minutes, we'll say, of the episode itself. But by, like, minute 15, uh, it, Madame Rouge is figuring out that, oh, uh, you know, we aren't supposed to be singing. <laughs> and the re and she's trying to break that from everybody. And she's the one that breaks it to everybody that, hey, we're in a crazy universe. We have a song. 
that Cliff sings about jerking off to a freaking movie, which is great. So, yeah, I absolutely do think that they knew what they were doing here. This is not one of those. I mean, it, it's that meta. Let's get okay. on the trend, but let's poke fun. at Let's piss on the trend while we're there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a very Doom Patrol thing to do. I'll buy it. It is. There you go. You want okay. some comments? I'll give you some comments here <coughs> on the episode. Lay it on me, Big Daddy. All right, I'll, I'll do the top three. I mean, the fun thing about TV time is they they can throw in screenshots with the stuff, so it's kind of tough to relate this comment sometimes if you can't see the screenshot. But here we go. Vic struggling to sing his solo. Remember each time he started that, and then somebody would always interrupt right at the end. Right. Uh, you know, whether it be Robot Man pissing off of a bridge near him or something like that. Um uh let's see okay it's an illusion bro larry saying he has a boyfriend in this world is like saying your cam your cam girl really cared about you <laughs> ginger <laughs> was there for me <laughs> and we've then, all been uh, there Le rita calling rouge a monster wasn't expected but damn that was uh yeah that was a pretty i don't know if it wasn't expected i mean i felt like it was building towards that all season well the whole episode, though, was them yeah. being friends. Well, we're best friends. Rita was definitely into that. You know, Rouge was like, oh, we, you know, this is kind of weird when she started figuring things out. But Can we then, Rouge has the best arc of everyone on this season. It, Yeah. You know, she what was her name? I can't remember. I've got the cast up here, but she's a fantastic actress, too. I she's really great. She she is. And she gets a lot of television, but she's better than TV. Uh, I'll, I'll agree. Michelle Gomez. Yes. Scottish. She was in the she was in the chilling um, adventures of Sabrina, and she, Alexis and I said back then she how great she was. Yeah. Um. And here it's almost like she's better than this show. But then again, this show is better than most things on television. And it's it's, it's so weird mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to be this good and be that weird. Yeah. You know, that's that's uh, that's a big check mark for the yeah. writers here, in my opinion, creators. <laughs> Um, I mean, I guess I liked it well enough. I just, it didn't move me quite the way, because I didn't get the satire in it. You're, you're well, telling me it's satirical. I get it. Um, if you didn't like it, I, I, the thing is, is that I don't like musical anything, really. Sure. I mean, you can't sit me down and make me watch any type of musical movie or whatever, even going into it, knowing if it's You know, musical. Legion had a musical episode, right? I remember. <laughs> I remember. And, and I didn't hate this one, because I think mm -hmm. that, yeah, I picked up on what they were probably trying to put out there. Last thing I'm going to bring up, and then I'll kick it over to you. Um, so they defeat Immortus, um, or the butts defeat Immortus. <laughs> the, I don't the, even the, know if she's defeated. The, the Shifupi singing butts. Stop her I mean, from doing whatever whatever her evil plan They was. stop her from being mad. That's all that yeah. she does. That's all they do. They're Look. Um, <laughs> if you were, look, if Mindy were mad at you, she's chasing you with the rolling pins. She's like, Jesse Starcher, you have not watched enough. Everyone loves Raymond with me. You know what would make Mindy feel a lot better? Singing butts. Oh, I'd tell the kids, come on in here, start singing. <laughs> with your butts. <laughs> with your butts. Yeah. Bend over. Start. <laughs> she, your she poopy, she poopy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go right now. I'm going to run into Melissa in the emotional support boys room and just make my ass sing. <laughs> <laughs> One person's moving out of this house after. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but... See, that one wrote in, written up in the paper. I'd love to see it. <laughs> Flo Florida man. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know Perfect. what got into him or out of him for that matter. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, but anyway, so Immortus shows up at the very end and she like gives them back their longevity. Uh, they miss Rita by a minute and she dies. Um, but she also gives Cliff, Cliff this is like, crystal and doesn't tell him what it does but it's like hang on to it you'll know what it does when it's time so cliff goes back to florida um he brings the car he gives the car to the grandchild um he connects with his daughter and her partner and he's just living in florida you know and they're working on the car him and the daughter and um he has this moment where he looks into the crystal and he sees rory's entire life yeah yeah and rory has some struggles going to say leading up to that i mean he's he's fully expecting to go back to florida and just live a normal right. life but then he starts to realize that uh, the the parkinson's is still there right and he's like i didn't come home to live i came home to die apparently yeah and right there i was like oh shit well okay let's go to somebody else but nope that's not what we do no 
they stay on him and they stay on like Rory's life. And again, Rory has struggles. He has like a child, you know, a teenage, you know, he impregnates a girl in like their senior prom or something. They he ends up abandoning that family, and then the mom, his mom, dies, oh. and you know, he just has one lifelong struggle after another. Um, and Cliff gets to see it all through the crystal, and then. <clears throat> I don't remember the exact line, but it's like, okay, like now, like now I'm ready or something like that. It was like, I, I came home. I'll tell you, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's you're 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 exactly on it. It's it's the fact that everything's fine. I'm home or something right. along those lines. Yeah, and I couldn't tell you why. I couldn't tell you why it bothered me as much as it did. But like, you see now, like, <clears throat> you see now, like I'm struggling with it, and I don't know why. Like it's a, it's a really nice moment. I have no idea what the effects that scene had on me. <laughs> it absolutely fucking wrecked me. I was. <sighs> I was like this, but worse for a good twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, do you remember yeah, what the you, line was? Uh, yeah, the the line was, "It's okay," because his 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 daughter's checking on him. Uh, Dad, are Dad, are you all right? Dad, are you all right? And he's yeah. like, "It's okay, I'm home," and then he just powers down. And uh, you know, this is in the moment where he's stuck, and she's trying to figure out what's going on with him, and he utters that one line, and it. Okay, so you send me the the text that says, "Dude, I just finished it. It completely wrecked me." And I was like, "Oh, geez, what am I getting into?" <laughs> Fuck. So the wife was kind enough to watch the show with me when when she could. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, man, she really she must love me to watch this stuff. <laughs> um, and must be so nice. We're, <laughs> we're closing in. We're closing in on it, and Mindy's like. Uh, Rita died, and yeah. then he goes, "Oh, they're killing her off." And I said, "This is the final season." Yeah, everyone must go. <laughs> Just to let you know, we're not getting anything else after this. And then we watch Cliff go through what he has to go through, and just to kind of, you know, throw it back to how that whole thing started when he started peering through the crystal. I think the beauty of that whole scene was that you watched the whole life unfold for Rory from the gift that his grandfather gave him from the mm. car, from yeah. that crystal, from that crystal hanging from that car. And you watch, you know, as the camera just pans to the side and you see his mom, who's old sitting there, Cliff's daughter, um, sitting there, who's now aged. And, you know, she's scared to go into the retirement home. Holy fuck, man. That I was start almost started crying right there. And then it kind of pans over to Rory, who looks like he's just about ready to ball. And then we pan back, we pan outside, and it's all straight from that crystal. And it, it was shot beautifully. And I think by the end of it, yeah, I, I mean, I had some tears. And Mindy looked over at me and she goes, she goes, that was a great ending. And really it is because they ended it there. Yeah. That was the credits rolled after that. And I don't think you can get much of a better ending from a show. And I think that what that's what also adds to the emotional like impact of what happened. That's it. That's final. I think part of what um, I think part of what affected me about it was kind of what we were saying at the top of the show about like <clears throat> when you accept that death is inevitable yeah how at peace he was with it peace right Right. Mm. Right. It's weird. I'm like debating turning off my camera. 
<laughs> you're this far into it unless you're going to get blubbery or something. <laughs> Leave it. Let it go, brother. Yeah. It's all right. I mean, I get it, dude. This is the same thing that was going through my head was like, yeah, just at my own, my own like contemplation of death and how it actually is going to impact my family. And, and you know, he was able, nobody gets, at least as far as I know, maybe you get this glimpse into the future before you die, but everybody talks about it. You get the life be- the flash before my eyes. Yeah. And that's sort of what happened with robot man. He got to see somebody else's life flash before his eyes and he was okay with he was what totally happened. Living for Rory at that point. Like, right. I feel like, you know, Cliff sort of acknowledged that, when he became Robot Man, when the Chief turned him into this monstrosity, Cliff was dead. And then it was like, well, what what do I do as Robot Man? And Robot Man's purpose was to redeem Cliff. Yeah. Before he passed on, you know, in totem. Yeah. And he does, you know. But I think the other thing about it was, like, it wasn't the happiest of endings for, for Rory. No, no, you watch him struggle. Yeah. Like, he makes really bad mistakes and Just i don't know like i don't know why i don't know why that jumped out at me the way that it did to where there's this acknowledgement that we're imperfect and that just because you make some not great decisions in life doesn't mean you're awful. unworthy right so all of that tied up in that one scene. And it's weird because, like, the Rita death didn't bother me. I was laughing through the Rita thing. And then at the end of it, like, again, that's how I'm going out. Me going, it's fine. And then I turn, you know, and then I Obi-Wan Kenobi out of my clothing. Please let it be just like some unearthly postpartum fart. That would be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, my, my, that's how my, that's how I'm going out. I'm just, my last words are going to be, it's fine. Oh, man. Um, Right, right up there with oh my, um, <laughs> Captain Kirk. But um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't cry during any of the Rita stuff. We have not talked about Cyborg at all. It's probably because I didn't give a shit about his entire story. You know, I liked what they were doing with him, in as far as he gave up being Cyborg, and then he sort of realizes that Cyborg is a part of him too. It's just you know he didn't want it forced on him, right? Much like Jane, he had to find a way to incorporate the different facets of his personality. So he figures out a way to be cyborg without being cyborg. Um, but I, and it was like, okay, you know, like he made amends with his friends and everything. And, you know, he, he, I liked his, I liked his story well enough. It's just, he's just not the most interesting character to me. And no matter how hard they tried, I couldn't, I couldn't get across. I wasn't expecting him. to bring his buddy along. Like I, the, the whole buddy thing that went yeah. on into the orc with or whatever, the weird dimension, that was kind of something that took me by surprise. It's, it's, <laughs> And I was waiting for that dude to die. Like I was just <laughs> waiting. He's going to die, and Cyborg's going to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is that that's what the creators do to you right. on this show. It, don't expect anything right. to happen like you expect it to happen. Um, but I never, I was never interested in the Larry Trainer character. Uh, well, you know, he's dealing with uh, what it's like to be a gay man and a keg as well, which yeah. I. I will concede that I agree with you there. It was hard for Mm -hmm. me to get invested. So like he goes, he's running off to go find his lover. 104. Yep. And that, that was fine. I was okay with that. I was like, good for you. The Jane and case Katie case, Cassie, whatever her name is, um, stuff at the end where they're, you know, two, two, two gay gals on a spaceship. Like you do. Um, I think that was a show on UPN for a little while. Two gay gals. (laughs) Gay gals. (laughs) On <laughs> coming up soon on UPN. Maybe it was homeboys from outer space. Maybe it was two gay gals on the spaceship. I don't know. Um, uh, people who don't know that there was a real homeboy from outer space didn't get that joke. By the way, there's like, what's he babbling about? <laughs> Google it, children. Um, so yeah, I didn't really start to. I didn't lose it with the conclusion of each character until we got to Cliff, and of course, they saved that for the dead last. Yeah, yeah. Right, but I've had some of these shows where, like, the entire time, like, the entire finale, I'm fucking losing my mind, you know, and then it gets to the end, and I'm like, oh my god, the whole thing. I'm like, this one, I'm like, okay, we close the book on Rita, we close the book on Jane, we close the book on Larry, and then we get the cliff, and this is okay, this is going well, this is going well, and then he, then, then he looks into that crystal, and I, yeah, 
you know, I was done. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was wrecked. Right. I was wrecked until we had to talk about migration. <laughs> <laughs> I had to uh, shake that off. Oh, man. Watch Zachary sing and dance. Speaking of musical numbers. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just watch the show. Um, uh, way to go, Zach. All right. So that's what I got. What do you got? Uh, I mean, we've covered a pretty much a, a great character breakdown of most of the important stuff that happens throughout this season. So I'm not going to really dive into that a whole lot. I, I loved. Well, actually, let's just put it this way. This was a long break for me in between episodes. Like I was. Oh, I the, stopped when I realized they were only doing half the season. Because remember, we were supposed to do this in January of last year. Right. Right. And I saw they were only going to release half the episodes. I'm like, never mind. Right. I watched the first three mm -hmm. and completely forgot what happened in there until yeah. I read it today. I was like, oh, man, I got to go back and read what happened. I picked up with episode four where Space Case ends up coming into our universe, which was pretty neat. I like that episode. Mm -hmm. Did you have a favorite episode at, uh, that rings out to you aside from the emotional one that happens towards the end? But was there any one that really? Oh. When they're in the the flashback when they're in the ant farm and you're learning about the butt and you're learning about the vampire butts, <laughs> the rare butts. Yes. And they're like, we can use these as weapons. Like, how do you get control of them? And they're like, all right, well, show us what you got. And they open the fucking doors and they're doing shapoopy. Oh man, dude, that I was, laughed my fucking ass off. I I I loved how we open things up and it's like we're we're in the future. It's a post apocalyptic future. What happened? And I'm like. Wow, this is kind of cookie cutter for Doom Patrol. Here we go. I mean, I, I see this on a lot of other things. Yeah. And, you know, by the time you accept the fact that they're trying to avoid some kind of crazy butt polyps, uh, then it, how are we going to get to that destination in Doom Patrol fashion? You know, how how is that going to happen? And, of course, we get there, and it's a strange, crazy ride on the way there. Um Episode 11, when they're in the time stream, is that yeah. not Avengers Endgame, but everybody fucks it up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I kind of feel like that was the writer room conversation. Was like, yes, they're like, we do an Avengers, but they complete, <laughs> but they were complete, completely incompetent. Send everybody back. Fucking Robot Man is the reason why Anals Calder is in a fucking wheelchair, because he breaks his back trying to <laughs> save him from something. Right. I mean, all that, it, it's so funny because it, that is doom patrol right there it's like we've got a mission okay are we going to do it number one it, okay well i don't know well, look we at can. the way it starts what was it the guy you know with like the penis cannon oh. <laughs> i forgot all about that oh, oh my, my god to, to, to wasps fuck like a beast <laughs> that's great Peak oh. television yeah, the the guy that was hunting the butts, the butt hunter. Uh, we didn't we didn't have we didn't have the beard. Oh my gosh, what was he called? The beard tracker or something like that, where he would eat people's beards and yeah. figure out. Anyway, um, I mean, I I think we've covered just about everything. I've got my closing comments here. I'll go ahead and read them if you're if you're ready. You got anything else you want to talk about? No, I think people on Twitter watching me cry about this television show was plenty. Thanks. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> let's let's end it on a happy note. Yes, please. Um, all right. So, you know, De Doom Patrol. I mean, it, it. We're at four seasons. It's it's done now. Thank it, God. <laughs> over over these four seasons, it fearlessly addressed themes of failure. Yeah and resignation in the characters each team member grapples with personal flaws often feeling overwhelmed at times giving into like what what's the point you know, why do i even need to do this why oh, we're going to have to save the world again uh, I, I, i'm i'm not going to do that team meetings team meetings were like mere aspirations they would call a team <laughs> meeting and then somebody would interrupt uh I've got this to do. And by the time the meeting is over with the person that called the meeting is the only one that's there because everybody else is off tackling their own. Oh God. Stuff. Madame Rouge is trying so hard. Like I have a plan. <laughs> like I'm trying. And they're just like, no, none of us want to do this. Nobody right. cares. And a lot of it was because I've got my own stuff. I've got to do. I've got to work on myself. Yeah. It took precedence before tackling like external struggles it's and very, that's every it day anti-superhero genre super superhero yes 
Yes, absolutely. It's every day for most people. You know, you you got to work on yourself first before you go out and try and do something else. Well, that's the Doom Patrol all over. Right. And in this in this final season, uh, you know, what you would end up seeing is like, yeah, there's a mission we've got to do. Everybody would walk away from it. But what would happen? They would all somehow awkwardly end up being together in order to do whatever the mission was. And that was a brilliant thing by the writers. Uh, but we get to see everybody in this season kind of resolve their personal battles they get to regain their longevity but of course rita passing away before she could receive the one thing that would save her was pretty it's pretty impactful but in true doom patrol style rita's ghost convenes a meeting so she <laughs> she dies and then she's still like hey we gotta meet and this is the one time I think, I, I mean, I'd have to go back and check, but this, it feels like this was the one time where everybody at that meeting was on board for this mission. Right. We're going to go rescue Rita from Satan's ass crack. Let's do it. That was, they were all on board. And that is not really a scenario far from Doom Patrol Adventures. Let's go into Satan's ass crack and get it. Get no, Rita. That tracks. <laughs> that tracks. But what happens? Rita reveals to the team that she has peacefully accepted what has happened to her. I Not only that, the more, you, the more you talk about, it, like you know, Cliff, Cliff accepts that he's ready to go. She accepts that she's ready to go. You know, there's a lot, and and not that everyone else accepts that they're dying because they don't die, but you know, Jane accepts herself. Vic accepts himself. Exactly. Larry accepts his, his situation. I think one of the things that, you know, and you kind of touched on it, so much of the Doom Patrol is them running away from themselves. Oh, yeah. Like, these are utterly destroyed people. Like, these were flawed, incredibly flawed people to start with. Then something tragic happens to them. Now they are just mired in shame. And they spent so much of the series running away from that shame. And the show is about getting them to accept your um, your flaws. Yeah. Getting them to accept your, your fallibility. And understand that, you know, whether you believe in a higher power or not, you know, we are all, for lack of a better phrase, we are all beautiful, wonderful, you know, creatures, flaws and all. And right. that should not make you hate yourself. It, it, that's the weird thing about the show is that that's kind of the lesson in all this is don't hate yourself, love yourself and love the fact that you're imperfect. Yeah. And it does it in the most weirdest but singing way possible. <laughs> it, is, it is, dude. It really is a strange way to get there. It's a long, yeah. strange trip. Yeah. And, you know, as Rita's sitting there and everybody's around her and she's like, hey, I've accepted the fact that I'm dead and I'm at peace with it. But right. I want you guys to understand that that was my life. My life's mission is also complete. And that was you guys. She realized what had changed in everybody and that they had come to accept themselves. And that's right. why she felt so at peace. Like, hey, well, I've done what I've come to do. Think about how she starts, you know, before she becomes Elastigirl. You know, she's this, like, self-centered actress. Right. You know, and through her association with the Doom Patrol, she is given purpose, and her purpose is to help these other fractured individuals be at peace with themselves and then go forward. You know, it's funny. Um, years ago when I did, uh, when I was working in... Um, uh, community mental health care you know it's doing individual therapy and we talked about like there had been people that had just been there for decades you know like years mm -hmm. and i remember saying to somebody like is that really what we want do we want people to be in therapy forever do we want to give them the tools to succeed on their own right okay and i don't believe in infinite ongoing never-ending therapy i think you go to a therapist to help with the struggles you're having and the therapist helps you develop the, the internal muscles to deal yeah. with your your situation to so that you can it. do it on your own. Exactly. You're the person that has to make that acknowledgement right. that I need to change. And this is, I. you're the person that has to make that decision. Right. And I think that's how Rita kind of approached everybody. It was like, I have to learn to become selfless. So I'm going to help these other people. And the show ends perfectly in the sense that they're all ready to move on right. and face themselves and the world. They have they have the strength. They have the muscles to do so now. Yeah, and it's be, and it's in, it's mostly because of Rita. You know, as much of a pain in the ass as she was, <laughs> and she didn't always have the right answers. But 
that's the acknowledgement that she has at the end. It's like I have done. She's like you know she's Elliot. She's Peach Dragon. I you know I came to you as you know, as children in need, and now you have what you need to succeed. And I I have to go find another needy boy. Yeah. There was a quote that I read on a review of the series, and I'm going to quote it here. This was from like Batman News.com. Eric Fredrickson, I think, is the one that wrote this, and it really really resonated to me. Yeah. Um. It's, the Doom Patrol was a team that made up of people who needed each other to get to a place where they don't need each other. Yeah. Um, it's like member- parenting. Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. You know, you're raising these kids. Okay. Now you could go off into the world. Right. If you've done a good job as a parent, your job as a parent is not necessarily to protect your children from life slings and arrows. It's to give them, it's to give them the shields and the muscles to handle life slings and arrows without you yeah yeah which i don't think people get no <laughs> sometimes you get yeah it, it, it it's tough being a parent sometimes if you to do the job right i'll tell you that much yeah but yeah the, the the doom patrol their in the end their purpose was never that of a classic superhero team the doom patrol is a group of broken outcasts that came together as a family whose mission was just to be present while the other person worked out their shit. Yeah. I mean that really, that's a lot of what you see is the, there isn't like, Hey, come over, lean on me while you're no, all you have to do is just be present. Right. And while Jane has gone through her multiple personalities and maybe keep her out of trouble for a little bit. Jesse, have you ever been like with somebody and like you're telling them your problem, your your struggles, like Mindy hit me with a rolling pin yet again. And I'm, so, and I'm so tired of Mindy hitting with the rolling pin. <laughs> Got a lump right here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you don't want advice. You don't want anything. You just want that person. You, you just want that person to hear you. Some empathy would be nice. You and I have talked about in the past, uh, as men, we want to fix things. Yeah. And it's really hard for me to be the guy that just sits and listens. Yeah, it's I'm, really tough. But yes, me, I do want that too. I just yeah. want somebody to f- just listen to me. I, I promise I won't take up more than five minutes of your time, and then that's therapy in itself, just to be able yeah, to vent. That's or, what. A, or, that's what a lot of therapy is. As a therapist, I am reflecting back the things you say. I'm not giving advice. When I work with my therapist, there are times I actually have to say, like, "Can you please tell me what you're thinking?" Because I kind of need some guidance here. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he'll just reflect back at me because it's my job to work through this stuff. Um, you know, practice listening is the skill, which a lot of people don't have. They're either waiting for their chance to talk, you know, or they want to or they want to give you solutions. And sometimes the best medicine is a quiet ear mm. or a singing butt. Perfect. I got one of those. You want to <laughs> see it? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, YouTube, here it comes. <laughs> uh, yeah, at, at the end of things, you know, each member of the Doom Patrol, whether they knew it or not, they succeeded together. Yeah. You know, they this was, and now the journey's reached its end. That's why the Doom Patrol ends so perfectly. The, as they all go off, that's kind of, you know, the purpose wasn't to be the superhero team. That might have been what they thought it was going to be, but no, it our team has now worked through our shit and the Doom Patrol is no more. When so, I think about where we job. started, you know, with the DC Universe show, there was Swamp Thing, which only lasted one season because mm-hmm. they couldn't get the credits in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> there was Titans, which I think is still going on. Or I think it just, it may have just ended, but yeah. yeah. There was this. Um, I feel like there was a fourth one and I don't remember what it was. Um don't i don't recall yeah either. because i because i get it mixed up sometimes with like the um the cw shows that were also like adding huh berlanti the berlanti, yeah, the verse berlanti or whatever. universe yeah but i feel like of that run of like dc comic television show explosion doom patrol is by far and away the best i mean because i was thinking about like oh should we should you know I'm kind of filtering back in some of the stuff that I abandoned just because, you know, I I don't care when we do things anymore. Like, it didn't, <laughs> me trying to do things contemporaneously did not work out the way I wanted it to. So it doesn't really matter when I do it. <laughs> um, and I thought about doing Titans, like finishing up on Titans. And I'm like, why? Who cares? 
<laughs> but I wanted to finish talking about Doom Patrol because Doom Patrol Doom Patrol earned it. Yes, I'll agree. I'll agree. I mean, we, we, Pennyworth is still going on. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, Pennyworth. No. I will quit <laughs> podcasting. No, thank you. Uh, I've always wanted to go back and just kind of see what the hell how they picked up that last season. Because if I remember the one episode where it was finishing things out that we were watching, like all of a right. sudden, like. Pennyworth is coming out. All these people are crazy superheroes. I'm like, that is not what this show was the past <laughs> two seasons. What is going on here? Yeah, um, I'm anyway. I'm over Pennyworth. I, was, I understand. I, I have not. I think the, I think I slept through most of season two. Mm, um, don't blame you. I miss Krypton though. It was a goofy ass fucking show. Oh, man, fucking Lobo showed up in that thing, and <laughs> I, I yeah, there's still a couple things that I wanted to see happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Man, but, this was like this was yeah. You're absolutely right. This earned it. That yep. really did earn somebody talking about it. And I hope people listen and go out and watch the show if they haven't. Absolutely. All right, folks. Uh, I think that's it. You know, Jesse and I talked beforehand. We were going to do this for an hour tonight. Um, I think we hit on all. I think we hit on like the major points of the show. Jesse, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? No, man. We we covered everything that I think was important here. All right. Well, last night I did not have a mental breakdown. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what 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 was what was the great sh what was it you guys talked about last migration night? migration okay yes. so you did not yeah and zachary right. strobel did a song and dance number and <laughs> okay now i'm gonna have to watch the show because that's gonna <laughs> you know might as well lead with that tag from here on out <laughs> <laughs> come for the music review stay for the musical um oh, so that's man. that uh myself andrew graham Speaking of shows, we're probably going to break down and cry about again. Oh, Andrew Graham, David Wright, and I are going to review season six. I'm almost done with it. I have two more episodes left. And the first four or five episodes deal with Diana and her imminent uh, and tragic uh, death. And I'll tell you, I was not... I'll, I'll talk more about this on Thursday. It's not that I was the world's biggest fan of Princess Diana. I had no connection to the woman. But I stuff bothers me when I watch it on TV. I react. And this, it bothered this me. is the crown, right? This is the crown. Yeah, this is the crown. Or as Robert Winfrey keeps telling me, it's British propaganda. <laughs> I can't just enjoy it. He show. would know. He would know. <laughs> he, why wouldn't he know? Um, no, yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't he? All right. Next week, speaking of things you should know, next week, uh, we've got Rebel Moon and our end of the year, um, our year in review. <clears throat> Jesse, we got the first Metal Hammer of Doom jukebox, our 2023 year in review. Yeah, buddy. And that's going to be Tuesday. I'm on the Movies That Don't Suck and Some That Do podcast year in review. That'll be the 10th. And then Pat Mullen taking a break from boxing, and he's going to discuss. I can't believe you didn't jump all over this. We're just we're doing a long a um long road to ruin. No, what are we doing? Triple, Triple feature. feature on The Punisher. On The Punisher, yes. Dolph Lundgren, Thomas Jane, and Ray Stevens. Let me tell you something. I saw that. I'll tell you something, brother. I saw that on the schedule, and I was like, I really need to start paying attention to the chat. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this was probably discussed, and I really feel bad that I wasn't paying attention. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, of all, I, I feel like just, just you know, I get the sense. I don't know where I'm getting it from. You're into the Punisher. Mm, might be. I don't know either. I were, mean. Weren't you known at the Swinger Party House as street level starch? I was, as a matter of fact. Still am, actually. <laughs> No was about it. Well, I'm definitely tuning in if I can't weasel my way on there somehow. You might you might be my backup if he doesn't make it to the show. You let me know. Let Jesse's me know. gonna Jesse Jesse goes to the goes to the swinger party house. He's like, I'm street level star. You want to see my M16? <laughs> like, no guns in here, uh, sir. Oh, you need to see my gun. Let me see. Feel my pipe bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm stealing that. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jesse, I'm done feeling your pipe bomb. Oh, so talk to me about goodness. your talk to me about your podcast where everything is good with Evan Bevins and nothing is good. With yeah, me. Mark Radlich <laughs> shows up every once in a while, but you know, he's it's not memorable. <laughs> yeah, doesn't make the list. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, uh, <laughs> my goodness. Mark Radlich, I tell you what, we do have some great conversations on the uh, Source Material Comics podcast and this recent episode that you and i sat down and discussed mark russell's not all robots oh my god like legit that is a really good conversation i had a great time i know i had the 
chance to actually go off on our, our uh, you know, just a rant about some artificial intelligence and how chat GPT is taking over the world. What are we, we're going to lose our jobs, Mark. It's going to happen. We got to be ready for it. And I'm hoping our conversation opens some eyes. I mean, maybe it does. You never know. I'm all about getting a robot to replace me at my job. Okay. All right. All I'm right. Stay home and watch TV and cry about it all day. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and so yeah check out not all robots i just saw that you know shout out to alexis Haina who shared a picture of a book that she picked up i don't know if you got the text or not snaggle she, got, she got snaggle puss chronicles and yes I, and, and a part of ronnie's soul died <laughs> he was like oh no yeah on the back of the book it says that actually it says, <laughs> all proceeds ronnie. go to defeating ronnie's soul <laughs> I, uh, I, um, there's a book, uh, by Mark Russell coming out. He's not quite done with it yet, but it's called Fuck You, Ronnie. I think we should talk about it on source <laughs> material. I said, yeah, I was, I it's weird. I don't know that. where he got that title from, though. <laughs> oh, so I don't like, I don't know. I don't know if a book called Fuck You, Ronnie Adams is going to sell, <laughs> but I think it's interesting. Don't you it's think Mark it's Russell. I think it's it's going to sell. It's, yeah. we're going to read it and we're going to cover it too. It's going to be funny. I can't wait to talk about Mark Russell's new comic book, Fuck You, Ronnie Adams, of the Screaming Boy podcast. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, Ronnie Adams, not a big Mark Russell fan either. No, so, no he's not. No, he's not. Ronnie Adams, still mad about the Flintstones. <laughs> oh, that's great stuff. Uh, anyway, so that happened last uh, yesterday. And then upcoming on the 8th, uh, you can check out the Unspoken Issues podcast where myself, Dean Compton, and Derry Wait talk about Jack Kirby's Fourth World issue number 20. Pretty specific. But uh, yeah, it was a good story. Superman goes to Supertown. Mark, are you on board? Yeah. Is he there to buy toilet paper? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a grocery store. Are you thinking it's a grocery <laughs> store? Yes. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> he put, just, throw, he, that he through, chat, throw that in your chat gpt you lucky so-and-so <laughs> goes into a fucking boob tube what well, you know and then ends up in a walmart it's just crazy <laughs> i uh, hey you wrote a whole like ai rights thing i did by the way i have been with you podcasting to some degree or another for almost 10 years 10 years yeah yeah um you've never been sadder than when you had to talk about on your year Ren wrap up that nobody gave a shit about your AI rights. <laughs> that like, was not the I've, case. I've heard you talk about children in your children in the hospital, <laughs> and you were sounding more hopeful. Mm. You were so depressed. <laughs> like, let me let me explain. I didn't really. Wrote, care. I, I wrote this thing about Mark Spector being a being a the funniest thing ever. Mark, okay, th th listen the. My wife came home one day and said that this lady cannot pronounce the fact that there is going to be an inspector coming to Subway to look over the food. Instead, what she would say is, the specter's coming. And I was like, oh my gosh. I went over to ChatGPT. I said, write a whole thing about the specter being a food inspector at a Subway. And I came up with a great radio play and everything. But yes, nobody gave a shit about it, Mark. And it really break my, it re breaks my heart. Let no. me tell you how I have been dealing with that for like 20 years. <laughs> Oh my God, yeah, all this wonderful shit. content that I produce, these wonderful conversations, these, you know, just putting our hearts out there. Okay, but can you Five give us seconds. more karaoke? Uh, okay. <laughs> right, right. Now, yeah. I think what really bugged me was, and I say bugged me, but it's more like, it's hard for me to grasp the fact that I might be offending people by doing that show. And you know me, I don't like to really offend a whole lot of people. Yeah, so. I, I, I thought that was interesting that like, the sweetest, nicest, most innocent man I've ever met. And people are like, fuck you, Jesse Starcher. How <laughs> no. dare you? How dare you use AI to write something fictional? No, but I, I, this is me beating myself up is what it is. And I see the online like rallying against creator rights, you know, being affected by AI. And I, then I was like, oh, shit, you know, maybe I, I you? shouldn't really be leaning into this and promoting it. But <laughs> Can I tell you? So my son's my son saw the um, the fact that Steamboat Willie went into public domain. Oh yeah, yeah. <coughs> and he goes, "How is it they already have a Mickey Mouse horror movie? This just happened." And well, I it's said, "It's been in the works." I said, "Jonas, <laughs> you can make anything, anything. You yeah. can write, you can shoot, you can sing, 
anything you want, any copyrighted material you want, you can have a fucking field day with. You want to make you want to make Caligula starring all the Warner Brothers characters? You can do that. Mm -hmm. You just can't sell it. Right. Once you right. make money off of it, you're in you're in copyright law infringement. Um, that's gonna be a lawsuit, you know. But if you just want to make a fan film of you know Daffy Duck butt fucking Donald, <laughs> seen be, it. <laughs> have a field day, you can knock yourself out. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, I get it. And that's why. And I said, so they obviously shot this movie to coincide with the eventual movie oh, in the ready. public domain. So they, they would were be ready. ready for it. They would already have it in a can. He's like, oh, that totally makes sense. Okay. And so our future overlord <laughs> runs into my room. He's <laughs> like, I man. looked it up. I now know I have a cast list of characters going into public domain in the next few years. Does he really? Oh, yes. my he, gosh. He ran into my room. He's like, dad. Donald Duck and Daffy Duck by in the next three years oh, will boy. both be in public domain. And so we started workshopping like <laughs> a War of the Roses, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Spy versus Spy, Daffy versus Donald movie, but they're totally gay for each other. Oh, wow. And Robert Winfrey in our chat goes, put that in the chat GPT and let it write it for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I'm totally gonna. You might as well. <laughs> Might so well. look out for that. Yep. Hey, I sent you that screenwriting program, which apparently is pretty nice too. So yeah, I'm gonna look into by it. All means, in, by in, all in means, by all means, in 2026, look for Mr. and Mrs. Duck. Yes, Mr. Sir. And Mr. Mr. and Mr. Duck. <laughs> Mr. and Mr. Duck. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's great. That's yeah, great that's fantastic. Stuff. Yeah, so check that out there. That's what we have going on here. I don't think I, I know that Snap Material is happening this week. Uh, I've got to get that. Oh my god, it's up. your number one show. Evan Bevins, you know what? Good guy. Comes your through. All -star. <laughs> He's the all-star. <laughs> Evan, Evan and I are going to talk about the Marvel mobile card game, Marvel Snap. I think that's what it's called. And uh, we'll be talking about the last season, upcoming season, and having a discussion about our top five cards that are we like better in the comics than we do in Marvel Snap. And it's a fun discussion. <laughs> there you go. That's it. That's all I got. All right, folks. Let me get off of let me get off of Snapchat for just a second. <laughs> um, I honestly thought your plugs were going to go a lot longer. <laughs> I'm done. Thank talking you, sir. Now I'm done talking now. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you for joining us here on TV Party tonight for Jesse Starcher. I'm he, who, of course, is my shapoopy. Uh, <laughs> he's my shapoopy. All right. Be well. Be safe. And behave.